If you're looking for a power supply that supports uh, new generation and power hungry graphic cards, which will give you a source of power, which will be reliable, of course, which is really important. Uh, it has the new 12 VHPWR cable directly from the power supply to the graphic card. So you don't have that hideous splitter from the RTX 4000 series and everything else. We got a solution right here. This is the XPG CyberCore 2 1300 watts power supply in 80 plus platinum certified. Now what's it all about and the cables and the modularity and similar stuff including the fan and all the certificates it has. Let's dive in. The XPG CyberCore 2 1300 watts power supply is an excellent choice for users who demand high performance of course and stability from their PC. Now this power supply unit is designed to comply with the ATX 3.0 design and has actually a compact size of 160 millimeters times 150 times 86. So basically what you could do is you can pack this uh, power supply. It's not like an SFX power supply, of course, logical, but it can be placed in those tight spots where the limit is around 170. You can still bend the cables nicely and reroute them. So this is where the modularity of the cables kicks in. It's packed with features that definitely ensures smooth and stable power, but we will check that with a special device. Includes the latest technologies such as interleaved PFC, active PFC and full LLC resonance circuit layout with DC-DC circuit design. As already stated at the beginning, we have a 12 VHPWR cable, which is designed for the next gen RTX 4000 series graphic card. This cable supports up to 600 watts of power consumption, making it ideal choice for you guys that decide to go with the next gen GPU. Logical, right? Now, as I already stated, this power supply comes as a fully modular power supply. So as you can see, and you already know what that means, but just in case the cables are detached from the power supply so they're not sticking out and you attach only those that you need so let's check out all that we have here this is quite interesting because you have 10 8 pin actually 6 plus 2 pin connectors eps for your cpu or vga for your graphic cards you have 112 vhpwr cable you have three SATA and Molex connectors and you have the motherboard. Now this is 18 plus 10, but of course it ends up as 24 pin for standard connecting to your motherboard. It's well organized. It's quite simple to connect the cables in terms of reorganizing them afterwards in the case when you place the power supply as it should be. And this will give you, as already stated, a possibility to place this power supply in a much smaller case. Well, basically not a smaller case, but in terms of smaller uh, power supply shroud compartment, which will give you enough space to reroute the cables quite nicely and push in the power supply without any hassle. The power supply unit has uh, premium 100% Japanese capacitors with 100 five degrees Celsius rating, which provides excellent stability and reliability. Now the CyberCore 2 is rated at 80 plus Cybernetics uh, Platinum certified. It has eight industrial level protections, including OCP, OVP, UVP, SCP, OTP, OPP, NLO and SIP, providing multiple layers of protection for your components. Even though I do believe all of these short terms mean almost nothing to you if you're not an expert user when it comes to components in these terms. Another interesting feature is the fan here below. Now this one is Vento Pro 120 mm PWM fan by Nidec. This fan has a fan curve present that starts to spin only after the load gets at 50%. At 60 it starts to spin around 900 RPMs and then we go to 70 to 80 where it's around 1500 rpms and when it's at full load it reaches up to 1900 rpms the fan has dual ball bearing ensures uh, reliability and long lasting performance but that's not all because when we're talking about these speeds the fan on the power supply doesn't create additional noise in your system which is important if you for instance, build a PC that it should be quiet and cool at the same time, 
the fan on the power supply needs to do the same. And this is where this Vento Pro comes in play. As I mentioned right at the beginning, DC-DC circuit design for the CyberCore 2, actually what it does is minimizes ripple noise, avoids unbalanced power load, and acts as a, let's say, a protective safeguard to components life expectancy. And the LLC resonance circuit layout improves efficiency, stability, and performance. Now what's interleaved PFC? The PFC stands for power factor correction, which regulates and stabilizes voltages and distributes power at its optimal efficiency. This technology leverages two chokes that alternate each other, reducing power loss during conversion. The result is more stable and efficient power delivery, which of course means a lot for us, but of course we don't get into that deep segment of the power supplies. It has an active PFC, which means that it provides even more power efficiency by automatically correcting AC input voltage. This feature helps to ensure that the system operates at minimal power loss, resulting in lower energy consumption and reduced costs over time. This also brings to the point where it's uh, 80 plus platinum certified. Now the XPG CyberCore 2 has a really impressive mean time before failure going up to 120,000 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. This basically gives us some sort of a reliability when it comes to power supply and usage in constant terms because, well, after all, we are looking when we buy components for our builds to last longer and not just last until the warranty ends and then, you know, five days later or six days later, it just dies for no reason. So this is quite cool. And that's not all because XPG gives 12 year warranty on this power supply, which is outstanding. Now, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to connect uh, some of the cables this device doesn't have VHPWR cable, but it can connect the EPS, PCI Express, uh, Molex and 24 pin from the power supply. So let's check that out. As you've seen in the, let's say, test or a benchmark when we're talking about power delivery and the correction of the voltages on that device, everything was quite all right, I would say. And basically, I didn't expect anything less than that. It delivers what it states here on the brochure through that uh, device that I already mentioned. And uh, in conclusion to everything, uh, we have an excellent fan which as already stated is quite important when we're talking about silence in your pc so it doesn't create additional noise then we have the modularity i mean loads of power supplies are now going fully modular giving us less cable clutter and more organization when it comes to cable management which is always preferable in all builds and cable clutter in some terms does prevent airflow of course, support for the RTX 4000 series and additional cable that is already on the power supply, not needing to use the original cable coming with the GPU is also, uh, let's say, an additional uh, less cable clutter in your system. Because usually, as you already know, as you already seen, you have a splitter coming out of your GPU with three or four 8-pin PCI Express cables to, that need to be connected. And they are quite short in terms above the power supply shroud, you'll have an actual cable clutter, which will bring up, if you're going, for instance, with 4070 Ti that needs three 8-pin connected to the 12 VHPWR, you have at least, at least three to six PCIe cables on the power supply shroud which is just insane and i don't have to mention hideous this helps you prevent that so xpg cybercore 2 1300 watts you have also 1000 watts as well to choose if you really don't need such an extreme power supply but then again this is more like something future proof which will definitely deliver the power that you need for your build as already stated, this was more like an overview than an actual review. And I hope you liked it. Hope you got some insights on the specifications, some terminology as well. 
And finally, don't forget to check the links below for the XPG CyberCore to 13,000 watts. If you enjoyed the video or at least enjoyed my blabbering about terminology and all the other stuff from the power supply that you never thought you need to know, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell for future content and hopefully I will see you in another one. Bye bye.